Good morning. My name is Judy Dalton. I'm senior pastor at First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Pasadena, Texas. We are recording this worship service from the Dalton House, and with me today is my husband, David Dalton, and our dear, precious friend, Cecile Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, and also, Dr. Julie Durgis is with us because she has uh, recorded for us music to guide our service. Please leave me a comment. Let me know that you're worshiping with us, too. We at First Christian Church in Pasadena are dedicated to doing right by our neighbors, and part of that is giving credit where it's due. So we have obtained the correct licensing for the recording and streaming of this service as well as for the print, uh, the printed worship guide. Let me know if you want me to email one to you and I can make sure that happens. Our CCLI number is 439-1628. Now, today is a special day. We will be honoring our beloved dead. And um, as part of that, I will invite you to light a candle. So if you have two candles, uh, you can go ahead and light one now and reserve one for later. Or you can wait and light your candle later during communion when we will be naming our honored dead. Or you can light it now and don't worry about it. I have two candles, so we light our candles to remind us that God is with us always. The visual reminder is helpful to us. And sometimes it gives us something to look at and on um, which to focus uh, our eyes and um, come closer to God. I said before that we would be naming our honored dead um, because today we are celebrating All Saints Sunday. Now, All Saints Day is November 1st. And All Souls Day is November 2nd, but we didn't gather for worship on Monday or Tuesday. We're waiting till today. And sometimes we limit our understanding of saints to people who were famous, like Francis of Assisi or, or um, Teresa of Calcutta. But the Bible calls all believers in Jesus Christ saints. We could include saints who were or are in the limelight, um, like maybe a, a pastor that you have had or currently have, uh, you might look to your pastor and say, oh yeah, yeah, he's a saint, she's a saint. But you know, Jesus set apart as an example of faith an unnamed, impoverished woman with no power and few possessions. We are going to look to her today See, she made a difference, and I wonder, how will you? Our first song this morning is uh, I Love to Tell the Story. We're going to sing two verses of it, and let's see, June 21. Here we go. <clears throat> Oh, my God. 
is time now for our children's moment. This is a special message for any children that are in your household. Um, and if there are no children in your household, I encourage you to pay attention because this is a message that you can pass on to children you meet during your week. Okay, with me today is Wendy Bear and also Coney Dog. Oh my goodness, they saw me setting up our worship space this morning and they are very interested in this candle. See, this is not usual for our worship. We always have the big candle and the communion bread and the grape juice that we take with communion and the computer, but this candle is very different and they wanted to know what's going on. And I told them that this candle is special. We light it and we remember our beloved friend who died recently. We'll remind our friend, ourselves that our friend is in heaven and is doing just fine with God and that we are okay. Children, do you know someone who has passed away, someone who has died? It's okay if you do and it's okay if you don't. I want you to remember this. I hope you'll remember that when someone we know dies, it's okay to feel pain and to be sad. It's also okay to have fun and to grow and love too. We can honor our beloved dead by talking about them, by telling stories about them, and by lighting a candle for them on special days like today, All Saints Sunday. So, see how beautiful this is? And if you were here, you would see how the light catches the different colors in this pretty bowl. We light this in memory of our loved ones who are in heaven with God. Children, I invite you to pray with me, and you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our families. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the church. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us so much. So much that you take us to heaven. That you take us to heaven when we die. When we die. Help us remember. Help us remember that your love is for always. That your love is for always. Amen. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from the Gospel according to Mark. We're working through Mark this year. Next year, we'll be reading some from Luke, but this year it's Mark. I'm in chapter, we are in chapter 12. I'll be reading to you verses 38 through 44. As Jesus taught... He said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Beware of them because they like to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, they say long prayers. I tell you, they will receive the greater condemnation. Then Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. And then a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. May God add a blessing to this reading, and may we be courageous enough to look deeper into it than we sometimes do, and may we be brave enough to be changed by it. Mm. Not long ago, my mom and I were looking through her check registers for a specific payment and I noticed that like every third or fourth check she wrote was to her local congregation. And then I did the math. 
Wow, those regular offerings really added up. Amy Butler agrees. She says our checkbooks and our budgets, personal and institutional, local and national, these are moral documents. Our checkbooks, our budgets are moral documents. They are indicative of, of our priorities. They indicate not just what we say we care about, but what we really do care about and value. For the last several years, I have called our weekly offertory invitation by the name of Giving Matters because the very <clears throat> act of sharing makes a difference. And you don't have to worry about your gift being small. You don't have to, to make the huge, big, impressive donation, although I'll be more than happy to accept it, you know. Um, that's a preacher joke. My mom <laughs> didn't laugh at that one either. The gospel they say, is driven by people with unknown names whose contributions seem so insignificant and whose words and deeds seem minuscule. Yet they set in motion an incredible spirit-driven domino effect that causes the world to be changed right before our very eyes. Today we're talking about extravagant generosity. We have hope for the helpers the healers, and the bountiful believers. Now, our scripture passage today lends itself to a couple of misunderstandings that are quite grave, and I, I want to uh, take a look at these and address them briefly. The first mistake is the more heinous. Some people have used this passage to paint a false caricature of an entire faith system as greedy. Let us be very, very clear. This is not an anti-Semitic text. Remember, my beloved, Jesus himself was a Jew. The people giving for their own glory are some religious leaders, not all. And the point is not just about pastors who do wrong, but about people in powerful positions who take advantage of those who are vulnerable. Okay. Now, the second mistake is overemphasizing the sacrificial nature of this woman's gift. The notion of sacrifice itself can be dangerous, and scholar Emily Towns tells us why. She writes, it seems that sacrifice is best when someone else is doing it. We marvel at such figures as Mother Teresa, the families of slain or injured soldiers, and teachers in tough inner city schools. We lift them high on the pedestal with the poor widow, keeping them distinct and distant from our daily lives. The focus is on their giving and the inadequacy of ours, but nothing changes. That's one of the problems with putting people on pedestals. We do not imagine ourselves alongside them because what they represent for us is often more than we can give or more than we can imagine we are capable of giving. Okay, now that we've taken care of that, what is this passage about? This is an indictment of oppression within the religious system then and now. Throughout his ministry, Jesus was keenly concerned about self-righteousness, about hypocrisy, and about the abuse of power, and Jesus was never afraid to speak to power. In our story for today, Jesus sits opposite the treasury, and this tells us more than simply where he rested his body. Jesus is opposite the treasury. His opposition to the treasury is also a theological and a political position as well. Jesus is highlighting this woman's giving, not to say that it's optimal for the poor to give all they have, but he highlights her giving to shame the system. The system is broken. Why did she only have a dollar to her name? How did she, a member of the faith community, come to be destitute? Where were her helpers? Now, if you think Jesus sounds put out, you are right. Remember, much of the fabled wrath of God in the Bible is directed against those who preserve their own wealth and power at the expense of the orphan, the poor, the resident alien, and the widow. In fact, scriptures repeatedly demand people of faith 
to care for widows and orphans and others in society who are vulnerable. So in our passage, the powerful and privileged leaders are ignoring their responsibility to care for this poor woman. And what does she do? She gives everything she had, all she had to live on. Now, literally in Greek, it says she gave her whole life. She gives her whole life. What about us? What about us today? Well, we go to Emily Towns again. She suggests that we think of ourselves as the coins shared. The coins, she says, represent the faith-filled offering found in presenting all of who we are and all we hope to become to God for service to this world. Church, we can do this. This is who we are. This is what we do. We courageously give of our time and our talents and our treasure to more fully participate in God's joyous work of turning the world upside down. We give everything we have, all we are. We give our whole lives in service to God. See, there is hope for we are the helpers and the healers and the bountiful believers. May God give us wisdom and courage to make it so. Amen. I invite you to follow Jesus. If you want to be a Christian, leave me a comment or uh, contact me and we'll talk about your next steps. And if you're already a disciple of Jesus Christ, recommit your life to Jesus today and put your faith into action. I, um, I advise you to read Hebrews 9, verses 24 through 28. That is our companion text to today's gospel reading. And also, you can put your faith into action in, uh, in ways that involve sharing. For example, the Interfaith Ministries of Greater Houston is welcoming a thousand Afghan refugees with safe places to stay. You are invited to join this ministry of hospitality by donating items needed to furnish a small apartment. Items like mm, kitchen supplies, uh, pots and pans, dishes, that kind of thing. Linens for the bed and the bath, probably the kitchen too. And if you've got it, gently used or new furniture. And take this moment to give to your local congregation or to First Christian Church of Pasadena. We promise to be good stewards of every gift entrusted to our care. And as we make our offerings, let us receive from Dr. Julie part of her offering to God this week, a beautiful piece of music. I cast all my cares upon you.
invite you to hold your phone if you gave through Venmo or the check you wrote, and let us pray silently for the building up of God's kingdom and the sharing of the good news that our gifts make possible. Let us pray. Amen. Carol Holbrook Pickett wrote an amazing litany uh, for uh, today, and uh, we are going to uh, share in her art history. We come to this table not because it itself is so special, but because it's an echo of another table, a table that stretches as far as the eye can see, a table that is laden with God's good gifts, a table where no one goes hungry or sits alone. It's a table where everyone is loved and whoever loved us sits and feasts together. In our own lives, we sit at tables where there are empty chairs, people we love and miss, people who no longer stop by for dinner or come for the holidays. We grieve those empty chairs, but we know that in Christ, our separation is only a temporary thing. I invite you to light a candle if you have one and think about the saints in your life the people whose memory you carry in your heart. And I've already lit mine. And now uh, David and Cecile will help me with chimes. Um, after every name, uh, we will go ahead and chime. Um, we at First Christian Church have lost, within the last two weeks, three beloved members and so I name for them for you in the order of their um, their deaths Carrie Keith Mix Christina Alford Lily Ruby Kinchin Cecile I invite you to share a name Keith Johnson David, I invite you to share a name. Dr. Eldon Black. Beloved in Christ, worshiping at home, I invite you to share a name now. For all those we have mentioned in your presence, O oh God, we give thanks. And we come gladly to this table to eat once more with those we love and to join with all the saints, all our saints, in praising Jesus Christ, who defeated death and leads us all to God's heavenly banquet. All are welcome here. Every time we come to table, we remember how Jesus sat at table with his disciples he took the bread of their meal and he blessed it, giving thanks to God. And then he broke the bread and gave it to the disciples. And he said to them, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup of their meal, blessed it, giving thanks to God. And then he gave the cup to his disciples. He said to them, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins, so drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Bye. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our last song this morning is One Spirit of Love. We'll sing two verses. smart and be aware of God's spirit guiding you this week and always. Go in peace. God bless you. <laughs>